Welcome to the Wealth Stream Podcast. The team at Hightower Great Lakes share their insights and passions for empowering their clients to live their best life. In this energetic podcast, we will take you on a journey to help you navigate your financial future, overcome life's challenges to reach your financial goals, and find the financial clarity you've been searching for. Let's explore the downstream impact of your wealth and what it means to you, your family, and your community to live greater. Hello and welcome to The Wealth Stream with Tim Scannell from Hightower Great Lakes. Today, Tim has a return guest. I'm, I'm excited. John Wichter is back. And Tim, I'm going to ask you this. Why would you bring John back on the show today? Well, it starts with a kind of a story in the last uh, last year, really, with COVID. But in mm-hmm. particular, in the last 90 days or so, I've been working with um, a couple different clients who have been looking to sell their business. And I always stress that, and I've talked about a little bit on the podcast it's a long process, right? So yeah. in this one particular case I'm working on, you know, we've had all, all hands on deck for the last three years, um, going through the process, you know, organizing the team, creating the, the valuations, you know, determining what the goals were. And really back in 2018, you know, one of the questions I asked the client was, so, you know, where do you want to pay taxes on this sale? And, you know, a confused look, but the reality is it's an Illinois resident and with a home in Michigan and a home in Texas. And, you know, so I said, you know, when you sell this business, do you need to be in Illinois? Um, and will income taxes be an impact, you know, and are there alternatives? And and we went through this whole process and he determined not really, you know, he didn't really need to be in Illinois based on the nature of the business and, you know, when the sale occurs. And so really back in 2018, and this is the point, it takes a long time to do these things and to plan for these things, we talked about it and then we created a process to change the state residency in 2019. And, you know, then the sale occurred in 2020, so it all Mm -hmm. worked out. Um, And, but I've had a lot of recent examples of clients who are, you know, maybe looking to expand out of Illinois into Michigan or Wisconsin. And like I said, in this case, Texas, or, you know, you just have to open up the newspaper to see the people relocating maybe from California to Nevada or to mm-hmm. Texas or New York to Florida. So I, I wanted to bring John back because um, one of the things we focus on in, when we talk about wealth enhancement is tax planning, and this is a critical part of selling your business. So I, I don't have a more expert person on the topic, um, so John is here today. Fantastic. All right. I'm excited to hear him. Yeah. So John, if you could... You know, you were on episode 32, which is back in April of last year. So it must be this this theme that I have you back during tax time every year. But, um, you know, give us a little background again, just to remind the listeners, you know, who you are, what you do, and kind of what your focus is. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me back. Uh, I'm an attorney in, in Chicago. I work for, my law firm is HMB Legal Counsel. Uh, I head the uh, trust estates and tax planning group there. So I've been an attorney for over 20 years, specializing solely in the, the tax and estate planning field. So talking about taxes, especially during uh, tax season, excites me. <laughs> That's good. I like to talk to other people who get excited about taxes because when I go home, my wife's not really that interested. So, <laughs> Mine neither. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and when we talked last, when you came on last year, you know, you focused more on estate planning, but you also did talk about some, ta- you know, tax planning and, you know, considering the state you're in. So I wanted to dive more deeply into this topic today because I know I talked to you a couple of weeks ago and, you know, we said, you know, hey, what's what are the things that your clients are asking about? What are the things that you're reading about in your journals and your periodicals, your web conferences now, because nobody goes to the real conferences anymore, but and you said, well, it's it's state tax planning. So um, why why do you think we're seeing more of this now? And, and what are you hearing now from your clients in terms of why? Yeah, sure, Tim. So I, I think uh, state income tax planning or income tax planning in general has become a very popular planning topic, especially for business owners and those looking to sell their business. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with when the estate tax exemption went up to 11 and a half. Right now it's $11.7 million per person. Uh, a lot of people became less concerned about the estate tax planning and were more concerned about the income tax planning. Um, with, and especially now we're looking at possibly a new tax law under President Biden, which if that passes, one thing he has suggested is getting rid of the step up in basis. So upon death, 
uh, right now, when you die, your asset value gets stepped up to fair market value for basis purposes. So what that means is you could sell the asset the day after you died and there's no capital gains tax. President Biden suggested getting rid of that. And essentially, at death, everything would be a realization event, meaning you'd pay income tax on all your assets at death. So due to that factor and just people being concerned about, especially the way states, and some states have risen their income taxes, their income tax rates, uh, income tax planning has become super, super important and a very popular topic. So, so just to clarify, or I guess um, go a little deeper on that one topic. So if I have a stock portfolio or, or a portfolio of real estate, um, you're saying that the proposal is to make, you know, my death or my passing a, a recognition event. So in other words, my, my family, my spouse, whoever the beneficiaries are, might have to pay income taxes at the time? Yes. So the proposal, I mean, there's two big parts to the proposal which would affect uh, people. One, uh, just simply the estate tax exemption. Uh, Biden suggested taking the estate tax exemption, which is currently at $11.7 million per person, down to two and a half, three million million, $3 million per person. So that, that would be a big change. But the second change, the one that we just referenced, was if upon death, all your assets would essentially be a realization event. So if you bought something for $10 and it's worth $100 today, you'd pay income tax on that $90 difference. Now, there may be some sort of exemption in there we don't know, but that's been the proposal. Whereas the way the law sits today, if you bought it for $10 and it's worth $100 today, upon your death that your basis would get stepped up to $100, you could sell that asset the, the next day and there'd be no capital gains tax. And and I just to help some listeners, I think when I talk to clients, they're not really they're not always um, sure how that impacts, you know, between federal and state. So if that happened, and I'm a resident of Indiana, let's say, um, how does it impact my Indiana tax? Is it a recognition event for that also? Maybe. Uh, every state has their own laws related to what happens at death. So from state tax planning, more people are concerned about lifetime planning. So some states have no income tax. Some states have very high income taxes. So those individuals in states where there is an income tax are always looking for how to get away from that, how to get out of that state and not have to pay the income tax in that state. Sometimes you can move, sometimes you can use a trust, but that's more during lifetime when you want to sell assets during lifetime, lifetime versus at death. Okay, so let, let's transition to uh, planning for selling a business. A lot of my clients, a lot of the listeners are business owners, entrepreneurs. They're at some stage of considering or walking down the path to prepare for an exit for a sale. Um, so I know when we talked last time, you mentioned that tax structure of the of the business, for example, is 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 really important. Um, talk a little bit about that, like the S corp LLC or C corp, things like that. Yeah. So when you start planning, you always want to at least look at what your how your business is structured because dif the different structures will have uh, different effects as to what sort of planning techniques you can use. Um, for example, if you're using a trust, uh, some trusts cannot be S corporation shareholders. So if you if your business is an S corporation, you have to be careful about transferring that asset into a trust, and you essentially could blow your S election. So you look at what, how your business is sort of structured off the top, whether it's an LLC, a C corporation, or an S corporation, before you start planning uh, to see what sort of uh, ideas are available to you. And so let's say, you know, maybe give us an example of a, of an oper of a client maybe or somebody you started working with that didn't have the, the optimal entity structure um, and maybe some of the things you, you did or recommended and how long that takes. Yeah. You mentioned I mentioned how long. I mentioned how long just because I, I always try to stress that, you know, planning for a succession for an exit is, is just a very, it takes a long time. So, you know, I, and I know I've had clients like convert to S or move out of S Corp um, and it takes a while. So maybe just expand on some of the analysis and recommendations and the timing of all that. It does take a while. You mentioned that earlier. I mean, I have clients that have come to me and say, I'm selling my business next month. What do I do? And, and, yeah, and that's right. an issue. <laughs> yeah, right, um, exactly. 
if look, if you want to change the structure of your business, it will take time. Um, it could be up to five years. So the hope is you don't have to do that and you can plan with what you have. But at a minimum, you want to start planning at least six months to a year ahead of time. And the reason for that is the IRS can come in and say there's a thing there's a thing in the IRS called the, the step transaction where if you plan too close to a transaction, the IRS can say it's all one together. And the goal of this planning is to save taxes. So we're going to do different things in the planning stages versus what happens upon the sale and how we value things may be very different. So to do that, we want to do it at least six months to a year ahead of time, if not further. So that way the IRS or any state can't argue that this is all just part of one transaction and everything, all the planning you did really just gets built into, for example, the sale. I see. Um, so definitely at least six months or a year out. And, you know, I know clients, um, <laughs> I, have, I have found, you know, hate losing two to three times more than they love winning or they also hate paying taxes. So, you know, talk a little bit about maybe offer an example or um, something you worked on recently where maybe you can illustrate the, the financial benefit of restructuring an entity before selling without so, names, of course, confidentiality. Well, let's talk about, let's focus on the, maybe the individual themselves, oh, Okay, uh, perfect. which might, which might be better because yeah. upon the sale, uh, the individual is going to be the one that gets hit with the tax rate. So okay. for example, the easiest thing to do might be for that individual. I say easy. Okay. We talked about clients looking to avoid the state income tax. So if you are in a state that has a high income tax, um, residency becomes very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's as easy. And again, I say easy, but as easy as becoming a resident of another state. And every state has different rules as to how you're taxed in that state. So say, for example, you're in a high income tax state like Illinois. Um, and Illinois is very much more of a day state. How many days are you in Illinois? Um, mm -hmm. Are you there for that 183 days or more? There's other factors, but you want to count your days. Florida, for example, has no income tax. So if you have a house in Florida or a vacation home in Florida and you can change residency to Florida, you may be able to avoid the entire state income tax by becoming a resident of Florida. And Florida is not a day state. Florida is what's called a facts and circumstances state, whereby you have to meet the facts and circumstances of becoming a Florida resident. You have a home there. You register to vote there. You register your cars there. You go to church there, things like that. Um, so sometimes it's harder to get out of the state where, it's the, where you pay the higher income tax, and it's easier to get to Florida. So you have to get out of that higher income tax state, meaning if you were in Illinois, you got to be out for 183 days. But you don't have to necessarily be 183 days in Florida. You just have to meet the facts and circumstances. So we've done a lot of planning with clients for just changing residency and working with different clients and saying it might not be Florida. It might be different states. But a client who is not set in their state or who has a vacation home or some other home in a, in a low tax state We've worked with them a lot on changing residency. And you usually want to change that residency at least in the year before you sell the business. Okay. And then I'm, I'm get, I know from working with clients who have done this that the, the states are, are pretty well coordinated now. So in other words, if you're making your primary residence a home in Florida, they're going to make sure that you are not claiming a primary in Illinois or Indiana, Michigan, et cetera. So do you guys work with that also? I mean, do you help with that process? Yeah, we do. We do all that. I mean, we we have clients coming from, you know, all different states and then looking to different states. And as I said, every state is different. So you have to be careful about one getting out of the state you're currently in and then how you actually become a resident of the other state. Uh, but we have checklists, things like that for every client that goes through it. Um, and, you know, sometimes you get hit with audits, uh, but you sort of work through you, for example, simply for Illinois, let's say you were trying to get out of Illinois or something like, or Indiana, you keep a calendar and you actually keep the days you're in the state and keep the days you're out of the state. Simple things like that can help you on audit. So if you are, um, you, we talked about the individual and there's processes the individuals have to go through to make sure they're, you know, getting in the proper state. So how does the, the entity structure of a, of the business itself, so you're operating in Illinois, you know, 
how does that impact the individual's taxation if the if they sell that entity, the business? It shouldn't affect it that much because essentially you own an asset. And so upon the sale of that asset, it's a, it's a capital gain to you. So if you get income, income can be sourced to a certain state. But the sale of that business, you, you would essentially want that to be a capital asset that creates capital gain. So it gets taxed to the individual where they're a resident at versus where the business is essentially located. But does it does it kind of murky it if or muddy the water if they're receiving comp like W two compensation you know in addition to like profits and K one distributions? Yeah, W two compensation and things like that could definitely murky the waters because that's sourced to a to a particular state um, versus just where you're a resident and how you pay tax in a certain state. So I'm gathering it's a pretty elaborate checklist you have <laughs> a pretty elaborate process you go through to make sure that everyone's following you know, A, B, C, D, and crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Absolutely. And, you know, some clients follow it better than others. Yeah. But again, if you plan, <clears throat> I think one of the things we talked about is if you plan well enough ahead of time, that helps you because you will file your final income tax return. So if you are going to have a realization event on your business and you plan far ahead, enough ahead of time, you will have already filed a final income tax return for the state on which you were a resident and started your residency in the new state. And if you were going to, and if you don't want to move and you get into things like trust, which we, which are very popular too, um, you want to do that a year or two ahead of time because there's planning associated with that. So let's, let's uh, kind of transition into that. I know you, you brought that topic up when we were talking about using trust and planning and how it impacts, you know, everything you've been talking about. So maybe talk just a little bit about trust planning and tax planning and how they relate. Yeah, so I think when we talked the last time, we talked a lot about trust planning for state taxes. Um, trust planning has also become very popular for state income tax planning. So, for example, that client who lives in Indiana or Illinois or California or New York that has a, that has a large income tax and doesn't want to move, says, I don't want to go to Florida. Um, there are now trusts that, are, that can be set up to where if you take a portion of your business and you put it in that trust in a certain state, you can essentially shift the state income tax to that low tax state, and you never had to move. So if you were to Google wings, dings, nings, these are, sound like you're going out to dinner, um, <laughs> but these are popular planning techniques right now, which are essentially trusts set up in certain states, Delaware, Wyoming, uh, Nevada, that's the wings, dings, and dings, that have statutes that says, I can transfer assets into a trust in that state, and when I sell my business, I will avoid the entire state income tax on that sale. So I don't have to move to Wyoming, but I can <laughs> I can be taxed in the state of Wyoming? Is that what you're saying? You, you don't have to move. Uh, there's a catch. Uh, I mean, I like these... Wyoming. I love fishing in Wyoming, but I'm just saying, <laughs> it's pretty yeah, desolate, right? Like everything, there's a catch. All yeah. look, states are always trying to set up certain techniques to try to get people to do things in their states. So it used to be for offshore tax, used for credit protection planning, you had to go offshore. And certain states enacted statutes to say, well, we have better credit protection here, so come here. It's now become the same thing with state income tax planning, whereby these states like Delaware, Wyoming, and Nevada have created statutes that allow you to become essentially a resident by using a trust. But the catch is usually you have to have a trustee there. So that'll, that'll cost you a little bit of money to have a trustee there, and you have to follow the, the, the statute requirements. Um, but there's certain costs associated with it that bring business into that estate. But like usually the way we've been doing planning is the costs associated with that are far less than the state income tax costs associated with the sale of the business. So you said wings, dings, nings. I didn't hear you say flings for Florida, right? So Florida doesn't have these? Just curious. So, so Florida doesn't have a specific statute with it. Uh, the, the benefit to Florida is so many of my clients are, already have a home in Florida. Sure. So, if, so for, if you already have a home in Florida and you can become a resident of Florida, your trust, so if you set up a trust in Florida and you're the grantor as a resident, that trust is a Florida trust from day one. So you could be your own 
trustee or your spouse could be the trustee. So you don't need the intricate statute from Wyoming or Nevada to have to deal with Florida if you could simply become a resident there. So it, it sounds, I mean, I know from working with you, I know just from talking to you about this today and talking to clients about this, it's super complicated. There's a lot involved. There's a lot of moving parts. You know, you mentioned that, you know, you, you'd like to do this six to 12 months at least ahead of time. So what's the process you follow? Like somebody contacts you. I mean, how does that work when they reach out to you and they talk about, hey, I might be selling my business in two years. I'm an Illinois resident. You know, kind of give me some guidelines or how do I, how do they work with you? So I, I think you start with what, what are their goals? Okay. What mm-hmm. are they trying to accomplish? Upon the sale, I mean, a lot of times it's estate tax planning. Look, I want to lower value so I can get assets out. And as I said, a lot of clients are interested in the income taxes. So we work with uh, other professionals as well, like you, Tim, to try to analyze, you know, what the sale is going to look like. So what's the value of their business? I'm a lawyer. I'm not a valuation person. But I go to people like you, Tim, who have, who have things that are available to me that can help me value a business. And we can give a client sort of what the income tax might be on that. Um, then part of that planning is we could say, look, if you want to use one of these techniques, this is what the savings will be, but this is what the hassle will be, okay? What are the downsides? You know, I got to go, I got to create a trust in that state. I have to have a trustee out there. Um, there's some complexity. So that's why you want to do it, you know, six months, a year, hopefully even more ahead of time. So the client can sort of get an idea of what they're doing, what the tax savings are, but also what the complexity is and whether they're up for it. And then I, I know, I mean, not to jump off the topic, But just to make a point, you know, I think in some of the work you've done, you've mentioned too that it's not, I mean, it's never all about taxes, right? I mean, taxes are a big part of it, but could there also be things like liability protection or asset protection reasons why you want to be in one state or another? Um, Like I have a client that's a neurologist, you know, just the tail coverage alone to leave Illinois is kind of locking him into Illinois. Um, So are there issues like that that you also address when you're doing the planning process? Oh, sure. Um, for example, there, there, like I said, for the state income taxes, states have certain states have also enacted statutes for creditor protection. So again, Delaware, Delaware is a popular one for all this, but you can create a, a trust in Delaware and put assets in there, and it gives you complete creditor protection. But then other states, like Indiana, Indiana just created an asset protection statute uh, last year, um, and so now you can create a trust in Indiana and get full creditor protection. So you want to look to your the state you're in first, um, see if there's a statute there. Uh, then you could see if you want to move to another state. But you can also just create. So with we're, we've talked a lot about state tax planning. Um, if you create a trust for estate tax planning, which is a gift, you would you would gift property into a trust. Um, maybe gift it into, for the benefit of your spouse. So as long as you're still happily married and everybody's alive, you could still use the money through your spouse. But that type of trust gives you estate tax planning and gives you complete creditor protection planning. So this is sort of the whole gamut of things we look at when we start planning with the clients to say, hey, what are your goals again? What are the techniques we can use so we can really hit those things for you? Yeah, and and, you know, I'm just thinking out loud as you're talking and there's so many issues involved, you know, and when you get back to state, the state tax planning, you know, so many of the clients that I have who are considering or have sold the businesses, you know, they like where they live. You know, they they don't necessarily want to leave. Um, and maybe they look at the paying the taxes, just something that's inevitable. But I think your your solution with at least exploring the trust, you know, the, the wings, dings, and nings, um, I think is a really great idea. So if somebody wanted to connect with you, get more information from you, um, start this process, how do they, how do they reach you? So they could email me or call me. Uh, my email is jwichter, W-I-K-T-O-R, it's just my last name, at H-M-B as in boy, L-A-W dot com. It's jwichter at H-M-B-Law dot com. Uh, and my phone number is 312-242-3305. And if they're looking for an initial information about it, do you have like any white papers, blogs, things like that that you, resources you can offer? 
Absolutely. So I can I can send that to individuals and and you know lawyers get a bad rap for every time somebody calls you know you hit a clock or something like that. Sure. Uh, there's you're if not charging want, me for this, are you? Uh, no, no. But if anybody <laughs> wants you. to call and and they have questions or uh, there's things they want to discuss, I mean, there's no we don't charge for that. We wanna we wanna help clients, and if we start doing work, then we talk about what things will cost and where it'll be. But certainly, I'm happy to to discuss options with with anybody. Excellent. Well, I'll just mention to the listener that I've listeners I've worked with John and uh, with a number of clients. Um, amazing resource. You know, we didn't even get into the philanthropical planning that he does with family foundations, but um, that's actually another expertise that he has. And maybe we'll bring you on for another podcast just to talk about that, John. Great. Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate it. You bet. Guys, this was a fantastic podcast. John, I'm so glad you came back. I I learned a lot last time, and this was great information today. Uh, Tim, of course, thank you so much for bringing him back to the show. And our last thank you, of course, goes to you, the listening audience. Thanks for tuning in and listening to the Wall Street Podcast with Tim Skinnell. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Tim comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Hightower Great Lakes, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Wealth Stream Podcast. We hope you gained some valuable insight that you can apply to your life and share with others. Please don't forget to subscribe below to be notified when new episodes become available. And don't forget to live greater. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Hightower Great Lakes. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Hightower Great Lakes is a group of investment professionals registered with Hightower Securities LLC, member FINRA and SIPC, and with Hightower Advisors LLC, a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities LLC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Advisors LLC. Hightower Advisors do not provide tax or legal advice. This material was not intended or written to be used or presented to any entity as tax advice or tax information. Tax laws vary based on the client's individual circumstances and can change at any time without notice. Clients are urged to consult their tax or legal advisor for related questions.